Welcome to Revenue Talks, the show where we get real about what it takes to build pipeline and drive expansion as a go-to-market team. I'm Justin Keller, the Vice President of Revenue Marketing at Drift, and on this show, I'm here talking to folks across the entire go-to-market organization, which means marketing, sales, and customer success, about how they use conversations, technology, and cross-functional alignment to build more pipeline and drive expansion. Because revenue, it's everyone's business now. Welcome back to another episode of Revenue Talks. My name is Justin, and today I'm so excited to be joined by Amy Frampton, uh, who is the head of marketing at Bamboo HR. I'm so excited to learn from her. If you're not aware, Bamboo HR is an all-in-one HR software platform for small and medium businesses. Um, Amy joined them back in April of 2020, and she had the mission of better unifying all aspects of the marketing team, which is itself crazy, right? Like the pandemic had just started, and here's Amy, who's trying to bring everyone back together while everyone's at home. So really eager to talk about what that process looked like. And then I think we'll ever learn just how Bamboo HR's team aligns with the broader uh, go-to-market organization and, and tries to drive revenue, which, you know, is the name of this podcast. So Amy... Welcome to Revenue Talks. Thanks so much for having me. It's fun to be here. We, I think we'll have some fun. So um, if you don't mind starting us off, tell us a little bit about who you are. Maybe give us a, a little quick background to set the stage. Great. Um, so I'm Amy Frampton. I'm head of marketing at Bamboo HR. You already said that part. Um, I've been in tech marketing for 20 years, longer than I probably want to admit. Um, and I, I kind of came up in marketing uh, at Microsoft uh, for about 10 years. And Microsoft is a, is a great boot camp in all things marketing. I got to try, gosh, almost everything. So it was, it was, that was great fun. Um, I then took a little bit of a career detour and was chief of staff at Hewlett Packard in their cloud unit. And that was, that was great and worked for Paul Allen um, at his company while he was still alive and then came back to marketing. And um, so I was head of uh, vice president of marketing, um, product marketing at Smartsheet. And then the last three years, I've been leading marketing uh, here at Bamboo. Um, I'm a Seattle native. I moved to Utah during the start of the shutdown. Um, Seattle was very shut down at this point. Um, and uh, and uh, Utah a little bit lighter, but quickly did the same. So it's it's been an interesting experience to meet everyone for the first gosh year over virtual. What is, what's your yardstick? 20 years in tech, you know, is 20 years, but how long does it feel like? Cause tech's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it feels like 400 years. I feel 400 years old <laughs> and sometimes it feels like a blink, you know, I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll think, Oh, so-and-so has done so, you know, they've been around doing this for so long. And then I'll think, well, I've been around doing it that long too. I just, you know, you wake up every day and and try to try to do the right thing and and earn your, you know, earn your team uh, help and and respect and um, so it, it's both fast and slow. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's okay. You know, yeah. I will I will admit there's moments where it feels like twenty times twenty. <laughs> I that's exactly why I ask because I think like the the swirl of tech is just so insane that it does it it um it ages your career quite quickly. Um, and you've got such it good experience. Does. I In cannot fact, wait. To, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I remember my first day at Microsoft a long time ago, almost 20 years ago, someone handed me a USB stick. I don't think people even use USB nope. sticks anymore, but I've been at a, at a creative agency before that. And I'd never seen one, you know, and I was like, what is this crazy technology? And of course now, you know, you just touch your phone to the next person's or walk by them and exchange files. Um, so it's, it's definitely a different world. It really is. I remember when I transitioned like, like into the workforce and I got a Blackberry and I was like, Oh my God, I am at the peak of, of tech. And yes. it's like, now I just can't imagine how ancient those look in retrospect. Um, I still miss my Blackberry though. I got to admit, I miss the keyboard. Me too. I could, I could write an entire <laughs> email without looking like it was, it was a great, a great device, but I'm, you know, all things move on. Um, so we were doing some research on you and we were listening to the Marketing Trends podcast. And you said that um, when you joined Bamboo, there was the sales team and there was the marketing team and then there was the SDR team. And all of them reported um, to your CEO, Brad Rencher. Yep. And now the yep. SDRs report to you, which 
I'd love to have a side note on this. But like, I think there used to be a very valid debate on where the SDR organization should live, but I am now of the opinion that I will die on the hill that SDRs should live in the marketing team. Um, so, hey, what's your opinion on that? Where, where do you think they should live? And now that they live with you, what was that process like? Like, did you have to wrest control of them or did it seem like a pretty fluid decision to make? Well, I guess a couple of things. Uh, first of all, let me tell you about how it happened. So I've been uh, at Bamboo maybe not quite a year, nine months. And I'm really lucky because I have an amazing partner in sales leadership. And he and I started talking about would would we be able to help the SDRs more if they reported into one of us versus reporting into the CEO, who is also great, um, but doesn't have a lot of time? Right. And would it help uh, them be more connected into our groups? And he and I, it's funny, we didn't really debate, but we just brainstormed. Like, I'm lucky that I've got a really good partner. And at the end of the brainstorm, he said, Frampton, I think these go to you. And I said, I I do too. I mean, it feels funny to say like, this group should move to me, Arr, you know, because that's not really how you want to be as a leader. But at the same time, I saw the reasoning. And so we went together to Brad and said, hey, you know, your call, but this is what we're thinking. We think they should go into one of us. We think it should be marketing. Um, and then he thought about it for not very long and, and made the call. I think when the SDRs moved over to me, there was a little bit of in the SDR team, like, I wonder why this is happening this way. I mean, SDRs, a lot of them, it's their first professional gig um, or it's their first time being an SDR. And I think there was some question, but we have found tremendous value in looking at our, our pipeline and our potential customers all the way from the top of the pipeline till they get handed off uh, to our sales team. And our SDRs are amazing at understanding what our campaigns are doing why they're calling people, you know, what, what really resonates. Um, and we've found it to be, we found it to be um, lifting both for them and their training and their careers, which we care just a ton about because we want them to grow as SDRs. And then if they want to come into marketing or go into sales or do implementation and stay as bamboo right? And so they learn a lot. And then we also find that it, that it helps their conversations. Yeah. I, so we like we like both parts. You like just rattled off all almost all of the reasons I think that the SDRs are such a good part of a marketing team because they are the front line of your brand and they need to be aligned to the campaigns. And I think especially now, and I interested in your take on this, I feel like the the buy like the B2B buying dynamic has changed so much. Buyers are so much more well educated that like that volume, that volume game just doesn't work like it might have used to when it used to be like a sales, like a boiler room kind of situation. You need to have that nuance and that creativity and, and be aligned to the broader corporate message, right? I think that's exactly right. And I I think and people are getting pickier because dollars are tight right now, right? And so the combination of a more educated community that wants to have deeper conversations right off the bat, um, whether it's on your website or whether it's through an SDR, that's really important. And then, you know, for a lot of these companies, all these companies, dollars are short. And so, man, you want to make the right technology choices and you want to get into it. And so um, I love that our SDRs can have deeper conversations um, and that we, that that's important to us. It also helps the marketing team and what we call the non SDR marketers, um, to think about how campaigns will flow all the way through to the conversation. And I think it helps them be better marketers. Yeah. We have someone on the team who's his job is specifically to think about that connection. He's on the marketing team. His name's Johnny. He's awesome. And so he's listening to calls and seeing how marketing is resonating and, doing all those things. And so I think it makes us better at the message as well. You are listening to one B2B professional's take on what it takes to accelerate revenue in 2023. But did you ever wonder what 600 other B2B professionals think about it? Drift partnered with Heinz Marketing to survey B2B professionals and get their take on the impact of conversational marketing, conversational sales, and conversational support on business outcomes and buyer experiences. Learn why nine out of 10 respondents agree that conversational solutions are valuable for creating an all around better experience for both customers and businesses by clicking the link in the show notes.
I love what you just said. Like, I mean, well, I've loved everything you said so far, Amy, but like if the SERs are on the marketing team, they're on the marketing team, right? So I love calling the the rest of the marketing team, the mouth of the marketing team, non-SDR marketers. I think that is very clever um, in a way of like just enshrining how important they are to the marketing organization. When you get those richer conversations started, there's still there's still a handoff, right? Which is always a tricky thing. And that's one thing I think that does become a little more difficult when the SDRs live in marketing is, um, you know, they're very well into the marketing, but then they hand off to the sales and sales kind of takes the ball at that point. What does that look like for you all as as you, um, you know, what does a handoff look like to you guys? Like, first of all, define what handoff, sure. define what handoff means to you at Bamboo. And then how does that process work, like tactically? Sure. Well, we're, you know, we're a 90% inbound business, hand raisers. Um, and what a glorious thing to be able to be in the tech, in the tech space. Um, and so uh, most of our folks that SDRs are, are, are calling have asked for, you know, have asked for engagement, like 90, 95%. And so once they make sure they're ready to go and answer any initial questions, we do almost always a live transfer okay. and we can set up a future appointment, but why stop the conversation? And so we do a very high rate of live transfers. Let's make it as easy as possible. These people are busy, you know, they, they got to solve this problem and, and think about, um, you know, how they better support employees or this opportunity, but they also are thinking about 10,000 other things as, as they work to grow and sustain these businesses. And so, you know, let's let's get the conversation rolling, get them to see a demo and they can see how we help. 100%. So once they once they are handed off or, tr or transferred live, um, then the sales team takes them on and they um, they don't loop back to the SDRs or anything. Um, but we track all of that so that we can see what conversations are working, what you know, what works best in terms of connecting with the with the sales team, et cetera. Gotcha. And, and and they work really, really well together with the sales team. So it's it's kind of nice. You don't have to be in the same work to work well together. Of which course. is exactly the whole point, right? Like the, there needs to, it, it's about like, and I what I've heard was you keep it focused on the customer, what they need, which is often like speed, the right message, right? And I think if you're delivering on that point, then the rest of the stuff kind of takes care of itself. And yeah, when, yeah, when organizations yeah. get hung up on themselves first, that's when like the customer experience breaks down and, and turns crappy. And so I think like any number of obstacles can be overcome by that. I used to have a mentor that said something, he said it a lot. <laughs> I hope he's listening and he can hear me make fun of him, but it stuck with me and he was right. He said, you know, in business, you always have to think outside in, inside out, you know, just doesn't work. They don't care about our org structure, nor should they have to, you know, we, this is about optimizing around the customer. Um, and he, he definitely, that definitely stuck with me. I think that's right on. That is right on. Um, if, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, you're aware of Bamboo HR because it's just like a huge hyper growth company. How, how big, how big was Bamboo when you joined, Amy? And how, how big are you now? Sure. We were just hitting about 500 when I joined yep. about three years ago. And, um, we are well above a thousand, uh, now. Um, and so we hit a thousand trying to remember, we sent out these really fun hats that said one K on them to all the, we had all sorts of fun LinkedIn posts, gosh, maybe eight or nine months ago. Right. So yeah, we've grown really fast and, and, um, but tried to be really thoughtful at the same time. And, and that's always the challenge. It's really, really tough when you're growing back quickly. You don't, you make great plans, right. And you hire against them, but reality does not like your plans more often than not. How did you think, like how big, how much have you scaled the marketing team since you've joined in relative to that sure. thousand employees? And then what was your thought process? Like if you're being thoughtful about it, how did you think about that? Cause that is such a tough thing for marketing leaders to figure out. Well, and I was really lucky because when I came in the founders, uh, Ben Peterson and Ryan Sanders of, of bamboo, Ben was running marketing and he and Ryan really were thoughtful about who to hire, but also the culture that we wanted. Um, that they wanted, and that I got lucky enough to inherit. And so, um, so I got, you know, when I came, I don't know the exact number, I want to say 45 or 50, really amazing demand gen engine, terrific creative team. We do all of our creative in-house, 99.9%, um, .9%, you know, 
um, in-house with an amazing creative director and, and brand lead. Um, so I, I was one of the lucky ones. So often you go in to a role and either the team isn't built out, um, uh, which is fun in and of itself, or you kind of have to do some rip and replace. Yeah. I didn't have that. I had a great marketing team, right? And so my thinking was around where are we not yet in market because maybe we've been, you know, smaller scale, um, not ready to invest yet. And, and where are the customers or prospects that we're not talking to just because we haven't gone there yet. And so as I built out the team, um, I'm a product marketer by background. Everyone really at Microsoft is. Every marketer, we're trained to be product marketers. And so I really built up product marketing because I think that story storytelling is really important. Um, I really, I added a bunch of customer voice stuff. Um, and then I looked at, you know, where where do we not have capacity to reach people that, that maybe we should? And, and I have about 85 marketers now. Mm -hmm. 85 non SDR marketers. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Um, yes. So it sounds like, yeah, I mean, you're taking your mentor's advice. Like you're still thinking outside in, right? Like what, who do we need to service? And then yeah. how do we build the team to do that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we're lucky because we've got a great product and, and customers love it. Like this is maybe a little bit of a side note, but I think most people listening will understand. I, when I went to Smartsheet, I went out to our, one of our first user groups. I think that they'd ever had, it just happened my, a, my coming to, to Smartsheet aligned. And I flew out to one and the customers love Smartsheet. I mean, Smartsheet customers are, they are crazy for Smartsheet. And I understand why it's a great product. And I remember texting my CPO, who was my boss at the time, and saying, I will never again work for a product that isn't loved this much. Like, it's just too cool. Yeah. And so when I was talking to Bamboo, they have the same customer love um, as Smartsheet. I mean, customers just, we set people free to do great work. And that's that's what they love. And so for me as a marketer, and I don't share that just to brag on Bamboo and Smartsheet, although I'd love to do that too. But it's about like, how do you decide where you want to be and spend your time? Mm -hmm. And where I want to be and spend my time is to really understand the customer feeling on a product. Um, and, and that's really important to me. Do you find that, cause I've had that privilege too, working for companies whose products were admired and loved inside and out. And don't you feel like that's, I, I think it, it sets you up to be not just a good marketer, but a great marketer. Like when you have that kind of momentum, yeah. that wind at your back, it, the, the Delta between being a really good B2B marketer and being like just legendary is so much easier and it's one of those things, like if you can be so lucky to work at a company that, you know, has a product like that all day. And I, I often yeah. feel for B2B marketers because so many of these companies are, you know, I mean, good, good products. They help solve issues, but are not something that necessarily gets people really fired up about their job that, that marketers aren't super passionate right. about. And I think that's why we end up with so much very bland B2B marketing, which is, is you know. Oh, I think so, too. And our, our CEO, Brian Venture, often will say, we are so lucky to be at a company with a product and a culture that makes us all look amazing. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is a place that like, you know, a dumb dumb like me can come in and look like a really good marketing leader. And I appreciate yeah. that. So I love what you said about, um, you know, when you got there, you did a lot of, of voice of the customer work and I feel like you're, you know, your day to day, your, your, your boots on the ground, your ear to the ground is the SDR team. Do you, how do you collect that feedback from the SDRs? Because they're having more conversations than you or I will ever be able to have with, with prospects and customers. And I think it's such valuable content, but they also don't necessarily have the wherewithal or the context that they need to say, hey, here's what I'm hearing and here's how it can help product marketing. Here's how it can help demand gen. Here's how it can help like the entire company. How do you guys think about that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our SDRs know the customers so, so well, and I'm grateful for it. I, I, um, I, they may not know like, Hey, what team put this out or here's how you talk about a messaging framework, but man, do they know our customers. And so we have a couple ways we do this. First of all, our SDR leader, um, uh, is in all of my leadership meetings. And so he's giving feedback all the time to his peers. And that's awesome. Cause we'll go through, you know, what's going on on each team and what's working, what's not all of those sorts of things. And all of that is shared on the daily, you know, we have Slack channels and meetings and all of that, but we also have a couple, um, 
more maybe process oriented ways. We have a content council. We have SDRs that attend that. And so that as we're talking about what content do we want to think about, what do we want to, what messages do we want to work through? And they actually just came, they changed our H2 or our, our H1 2023 themes. Cause we thought we were such smart marketers. We knew exactly what they wanted, right? Like exactly what customers wanted. And they came in, they're like, here's the three questions I'm getting right now. We're like, Oh, and it wasn't a like black to white or white to black sort of thing. It was more in the gray, but it was definitely a change. And we changed our whole content strategy based on it because they're talking to customers every day, right? And what a cool thing. Um, what a cool thing. And so we really appreciate them. That's going to be a calendar meeting moving forward that they'll be in. And then we um, we have a system that we can listen to calls. And so we also listen to calls on the regular, like all the time. And we'll share them. Hey, listen to how this was done. This looks like this is working um, and so that's a very active, not monitoring to make sure the SDRs are doing their job, but trying to understand the nuance of those conversations. I think you're totally right. And it is easy to think, oh, we're really smart marketers. But honestly, no, like often we're kind of chasing our own tails. And we think this sounds good. And we we yeah. we have like our own bias towards making sure it works. But like getting all that cross-functional feedback is so hard. And it's actually, I'm really interested to hear your take on this because you spent a lot of time as a chief of staff. Do you have, so it's the beginning of the year, like a lot of us are working on our, like our H1 and our, our new fiscal year plans. What's your approach generally to, I don't know, creating the right groups or starting the right conversations or, or whatever it is that connect the dots between, you know, disparate teams or even internal marketing teams in a way that is, you know, one plus one equals three for, for the whole, I mean, I guess for the whole marketing organization, but really the whole company if, if able. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do, um, uh, a waterfall goal setting at Bamboo with OKRs that works really, really well that all of leadership signs off on. And we we start, you know, early fall doing those and those waterfall through. But then we also have a set of marketing KPIs and we build our plans together as a group. And I think I think we've gotten better and better at this. I mean, if, if I was to say three years ago, did we plan together as a group? No, we really didn't. Um, but this year, I feel like we've got that kind of perfect synergy where my lead and it's it's them it's the this leadership team has come together as a marketing leadership team and saying how do these things connect joint calendaring planning and joint kpis that we all sign up for and we enroll our teams on and it's so easy for the product marketing team to be thinking about the launches and the messaging framework and then the content team is doing this other thing and the you're on charge of the webinars but I think we've gotten better and better. And as I say, certainly not perfect, but so much better as we plan for 2023. We spent most of Q4 just talking and then reviewing results and, and setting out joint KPIs that we all sign up to. So they're not your goals. They're not my goals. They're not his or her goals. They are our goals. And I think that's super, super important. I think that's so important. And again, like, I mean, just have, getting those conversations started, breaking down those walls and just taking the ego out of the room makes those conversations yeah. easier to have. And it's one of those things where it's, you know, getting the right people in the room, but making sure everyone's got a part of that conversation in my experience always ends up with a better result. Um, and it's, yeah. you know, it's easy to have an ego and to, like we're talking about with the SDRs having an opinion on it, but when you open it up, it's always a better output. Exactly. That's exactly right. And they are so stinking smart. And I, I meet with them, their leadership, every week and and just yeah i'm i'm really grateful to have their inputs so um talking about all this planning what are what are the big blockers like what are the things that you guys do get tripped up on as you're thinking because it's you know one of these things where we, we said earlier like you make a plan and then pretty quickly that plan falls apart right and so you always have to pivot mm -hmm. how do you think about it in a longer term framework right do you think about it in the year and if so like is it kind of like generally here's the guidepost we want to hit and if we don't then here's where we're going or, or how do you how do you lead your team through a year when you, you make yeah. a plan up front we have built a plan for the year with an with a monthly review and so that we are actively testing working learning evaluating changing and then repeat um uh, uh, one of our themes at, at Bamboo is choose, focus, finish, repeat. 
And so we set a plan, but I, my guess is by Q2, it will have been really changed. And, um, and that's good because we'll have learned things. And um, so I want people thinking long-term for sure and how things will roll out. But I also want there to be a clear understanding that if we're not learning and changing, that we're not doing it right. Um, you know, and it might be something really worked and let's do more. And it might be, wow, that, that did not go like we thought. Let's, that did not at all resonate with what we were trying to do or trying to help. And, and let's, um, let's pull the ripcord on that one. So, um, so that's how we plan. We plan as a group and then we do some fun awards around our goals. So it's not just, Hey, we wanted to get to 105% and we did, but people that are living our values in the way that supports the corporate goals, we, we honor them in marketing every month. And so, um, and they're picked and they're surprised and we do something fun for them that they love. So if you love skiing, you get to go skiing for a day. It's dumping snow outside my window right now. So that I thought of that one. Or if you love, you know, spa day or whatever it is, um, we honor that and try to really help people understand the connection between the cool stuff they're doing and the hard work they're putting in and the goals we're trying to reach. So are these like predefined like awards like you get an award for you know hitting your pipeline goal or is it like hey this person was really a star this month and i want to shine a light on exactly that's what it is okay yeah yeah so we pick two or three a month highlight them in our team meeting which are now virtual Mm -hmm. and um or have been ever since i've been at bamboo um and also we're in you know we're in like 20 states and so we're virtual anyway at this point and um and, uh, yeah, we honor a few people and it's a surprise and, and, um, have quotes about them that their peers have said about. So it's not just, Hey, you, you know, you reach the sales goal, this numbers goal. It's more about how are you doing your job that, that lifts, um, the goals and of the company gotcha. and, and each other. Yeah. Yeah. I love that very, very much. Um, so I, this might be a kind of a loaded question, um, given your background as a product leader, market marketer, but I also think that, you know, based on your willingness to like change and adapt really quickly, kind of belies your background as a product marketer. Um, I feel like product marketers are like, no, this is the way we're doing it. We're sticking to it at least for the next two quarters. Cause I don't want to do all this stuff again, but, um, how do you like, when you think of I'll, bamboo, I'll share that with my, my product marketing team, <laughs> <laughs> um, is Bamboo, do you think of it as, as product-led? Is it marketing-led? Um, or can both be true? And it, it is kind of, you know, like a virtuous cycle. How do you think about that? And how does your role, like, play into it? Yeah. So we are product-led, for sure. Our product is the number one thing and, and that we think about all the time. That said, our buying cycle is marketing-led. Okay. And so, um, you know, we don't right now have sign up online kind of stuff. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to talk to a salesperson and we're going to figure out what's best. And that experience with us is really important, whether it's with sales or implementation or success or support that, that connection is really important to us. And so, um, so sometimes when people say product led, it's literally product led in the sense that you get a, you know, you're on your own. And so it, I would say Bamboo is product-led in that the product is what we care about the very most. The, how the product can serve and help the customer is, is what we care about the most. And then and then marketing helps make those connections for folks. Which is kind of where you want to be as a marketer, right? To be, And we, we were yeah. talking about earlier, like it's an amazing oh, yeah. product. And so being able to just, you yeah. know, put like the wonderful experience on top of that is like yep. a, a blissful place to be as a, as a marketer. Um, so envious for, sure. for you of that for, I'm sure on behalf of many of our listeners, that's a really cool place to be. Um, okay. Amy, we're heading up to the end here. We have a signature revenue talks question. We ask every single guest every single time. And that is this. Okay, I'm gonna try to try to get it right. It's a toughie, and there's no right there's no right or wrong okay. answers. Um, and that's why I like this question. But it's what is we're at the beginning of the year. Um, what's the number one thing that you your team are focused on to accelerate revenue for the rest of this year? Um, sure, talking to to the right people, and you're gonna say, well, duh. But what I mean by that is, is how we think about where our product fits in market is by employee size, because we really can help certain sizes of companies. And so 
Um, we want to make sure that we're doing that. We build for that. We love the, the SMB space. And so sometimes when you go out as a marketer, it's hard to reach, you know, those certain folks, right? Breadth is easy. Yep. Connecting with the exact right folks that you can help the most is, is harder. And so this year and last year, but I think, you know, every year we take it up a notch. How can we find the, the people that we can really help? and that we can really lift and that we can set free to do great work using bamboo products. And, and how do we do that? And often what is in the SMB space, a, a digital motion, right? You know, and so in the enterprise space, and when I've worked um, most of my career, at least part of my work was enterprise there, you know, you can have a meeting with 12 CFOs at, in New York, right? And this, that's not our business. Um, we're looking to reach business, you know, enterprise CFOs, we're reaching, looking to reach CFOs, COOs, CEOs, and, and, and CHROs across this SMB space. And so reaching them in a digital way is, is the most efficient and the most effective, but you can always get better at that. So that's our number one focus. And we also, I'll just tease a little bit, we've got some amazing product launches coming out this year. And so we're very focused on, on landing those uh, with our audiences as well. Amazing. I, I love the theme of just listening like and i think people don't listen to yourselves listen to other people take make the time because yes. it's such a it's such an easy thing to cross off your to-do list and just say i don't need to do this i think it is so critical and amy you're right. a wonderful reminder of just how powerful that is and i love you know always think about marketing kudos to your mentor like outside in always right it's not you it's everyone else that matters and i think that it is important for us marketers to remind ourselves that we're in the service of you know the sales team yes but our customers ultimately we want to create really great experiences for them yeah. our customers and, and our mission yep so yeah absolutely this was absolutely wonderful i learned so much from you Amy. thank you so much for joining us on revenue talks so great to be with you thanks justin thank you so much for listening to revenue talks if you liked this episode please consider leaving a review wherever you're listening you can connect with me on twitter at justin keller and the entire Drift Podcast Network at, at Drift Podcasts. Remember, revenue, it's everyone's business now. 